Hi, my name is Nick and uh, in today's video we will uh, have a look at uh, BBS HD 1000 watts uh, mid-drive kit from Bafang. Just for your information, I bought this kit from uh, Bafang Europe store in Aliexpress. I chose uh, this store because it offers uh, short delivery times and uh, also uh, shipping free of charge. In addition, this store is very reliable based on the Aliexpress rating and also based on the customer's reviews. And uh, last but not least, this store has a warehouse in Poland, so for the European uh, citizens, you don't have to pay any extra import uh, taxes. I have split this video in uh, two parts. In the first part, I will uh, present the contents of the packets and uh, in the second part, I will try to have a Q&A session for uh, beginners like me. The box itself weighs uh, more or less 16 kilos and it came to my place in Belgium uh, extremely fast. Just in five days from the day I placed the order using the UPS company. Let's now see what is included inside uh, the box. Okay, let's see now what is included inside the battery box. So we have the battery itself. I hope you are able to, to read the sticker here. So this is 48 volts, 20 amps, 960 watts per hour battery. On the left side of the battery we have the lock mechanism to mount and unmount the battery from your uh, frame. We have also a USB port and on the right side we have this charging port and the on off uh, button here. Also we have the a pair of keys and four screws to mount the battery tray on uh, your mountain bike frame. To unlock the battery we have to use as I told you the keys. You can see here. And this is the battery tray. As I told you you have to mount this tray on your mountain bike frame. The battery connection is an uh, XT60 plug. This is the battery charger with an uh, EU plug. An extension uh, cable for the battery also with uh, an XT60. We have two different kind of manuals. The first one is uh, related to the battery, is in English. And the second one is a user manual for the charger. The last thing inside the battery box is this battery ring cover with the logo of the, of the company. Now let's check the weight of this battery and the battery weights 4.9 kilos. To, to check uh, the, the battery power, so first of all we have to put this uh, button to on and to check the battery capacity as you can see there is a, a power button on the in the middle so if you press it you see that we have four greens so four greens it means uh, 100 percent uh, power three greens 75 percent two greens uh, 50 percent and one green zero to 25 percent and the last thing I want to, to show you about this battery is the USB port. Yeah, you can see that uh, my mobile phone is uh, charging. Now let's move into the second box, the one that uh, includes the mid-drive uh, motor kit. I will start with the gift that Buffang uh, offers with this kit. So this is the tool to install the mid-drive motor kit to your bottom bracket. This is the second tool 
it's a crank uh, puller with some uh, zip ties white gloves to use them during the installation process and the last uh, gift from Bafang is the front light I will continue with the mid-drive uh, motor this is a Bafang 1000 watts uh, motor and this motor is suitable for 68 millimeters to 73 millimeters bottom brackets and if you want to know the weight of this motor you can see that is more or less 7.5 kilos inside the kit we have uh, two crank arms one left and one right then we have the chain wheel in my case is 44t this is the throttle we have this power cable to connect the motor with the battery here we have all the hardware we need to install the motor into the bottom bracket and in case you have like me 73 millimeters bottom bracket we have to use these long screws with uh, with the spacers next thing I want uh, to show you is the speed sensor this is the the part this is the magnet the part that goes to the wheel spoke and this is the part that we have to mount uh, on our frame inside the same plastic bag with the speed sensor we have the T4 cable you can see the connectors in this uh, cable we have to connect the, the brakes the shift sensor and also the, the touchscreen of course when we are using the brakes we want the motor also to stop so for that reason we have to, to use either these uh, brake levers or the brake sensors in my case even if I order you know the the speed sensors the, the Bafang make a mistake and they send me these uh, brake levers so I have already conducted with the company and uh, they send me free of charge the speed sensors the last part inside this kit is the is the display so this is the T1 Bluetooth display we will go deeper on uh, on this display when we finalize the installation of the kit that's all folks with the uh, unboxing and now let's move to the second part with the Q&A session for beginners okay let's start with question number one how do i know whether the product is suitable for my bike you know i was at the same situation three months ago when i started searching for a mid-drive motor kit and here is my advice before you go out and buy a mid-drive e-bike kit you should know a few things about your bike first and foremost you should know if your bracket is a GIS or BSA standard. The second thing is to ensure that the bottom bracket cell is threaded and last but not least the bottom bracket's width must be at least 68 to 73 millimeters. Now measuring the bottom bracket. The mid-drive uh, motor as you know fits through the bottom bracket. The first measurement to take is the cell width. On the picture depicted on your screen you can see where to take the measurement on a bike and uh, the second measurement is uh, bottom bracket uh, diameter on your screen you can see how simple it is to to get this uh, measurement of course measuring the bottom bracket is not enough as you know this kit comes in two parts the first part is the motor and the second part is is the battery the fit of a bottle mounted battery highly depends on the shape of your bike frame so follow these steps to see if there is enough space on your frame first find out the height of the battery you want to install Imagine fitting a rectangular box. You will see there is some wasted space on either side where there is not enough room to fit the head of the battery. The remaining length is what's available for the battery. So take your best measurements to work out what the maximum length the battery can be. 
Also, bear in mind that if the battery is removable, remember to leave enough room for the battery to come out of the holder. I would recommend around 5 to 7 cm at the top corner of the battery so that it has enough space. Question number 2. Is there any difference between 68mm and 73mm motor kit? So, for the mid-drive motor kit from Bafang, we have three options. The first option is 68 to 73 millimeters. The second option is 100 millimeters. And the third option is 120 millimeters. Well, the only difference between the 68 and 73 millimeters uh, bottom bracket fit is uh, the multiple spacers are included in order to fit both sizes. That means, in case you see a bottom bracket for sale that says 68 slash 73, it means it will fit both, but it includes a couple spacers in the box to make it fit the 73mm bottom brackets. For a 73mm wide bottom bracket, you have to use the two longer supplied M6 bolts to attach the fixing plate and also to use three up to five spacers per bolt between fixing plate and drive unit. Question number three. Which one is best for conversion kits? 48 volts or 72 volts? This question depends entirely on the type of converting kit that you intend to use. But if you are using the buffang, my recommendation is 48 volts because it does not give any errors on this type of kit. As for the 52 volts, some errors uh, have reported uh, in several groups on the internet. The most famous of which is the error 30, which is uh, the error responsible for the communication. I have to admit that the 52 volt battery is better than the 48 volt battery because it increases the speed and performance of the electric bike by about 7.5% or nearly 100 watts per hour. When upgrading from uh, 48 volts to 52, you must make sure that the controller will support the battery amp. As a conclusion, if you intend to install a conversion kit from Bafang, it is preferable that the battery be 48 volts. Question number 4. Brake levers or brake sensors? So let's start with the brake levers. Well, uh, on the picture on the left side of uh, your screen, these are replacement Bafang mechanical e-brake levers. These e-brake levers are plug and play compatible with the Bafang BBS01, BBS02 and BBS HD. Why we use this kind of levers? These levers cut power to the motor when engaged. Either choose the brake lever side you need to replace or buy the pair of both brake levers. About the levers, keep in mind that you cannot use them to bicycles with hydraulic uh, brake levers. Brake sensors. You can see what we are talking about on the right side of uh, your screen. The e-brake sensors allow you to convert your already existing brakes into e-brakes, which will be able to cut power to the motor when you brake. Again, the e-brake sensors are plug and play compatible with BBS02 and BBS HD only. And some bullet points about the brake sensors because most of us using this kind of, uh, of sensors are compatible with lever based uh, brakes including hydraulic brakes and disc brakes cuts power to the motor when your brake lever is engaged connects to brake cable coming from main wiring harness magnet attaches to your brake lever using provided double-sided trim tape how do they work when the magnet is touching the e-brake sensor the e-brake is inactive allowing the motor to run when your brake is engaged this causes the magnet to move away from the e-brake sensor activating the e-brake and cutting power to the motor in a nutshell if you have a combined shift lever or hydraulic brake which can prevent you from removing the existing brake lever, the brake sensor is a good choice for turning off the motor. Question number 5. In order to install the motor, do I need additional tools other than those included in the kit? Ok, besides the Buffang BBS tool and the crank puller which are included on the kit, you're gonna need, uh, first of all, a chain 
breaker tool to help you break the chain and remove the front derailleur. You're gonna need a bottom bracket socket and in case you want to change your cassette you will need also a cassette socket. A wrench to remove the pedals, hex keys of various sizes, most bolts on the bicycle require quite uh, a low torque and this is why we need the bicycle specific torque wrench. A chain wipe to help you remove the cassette and also to help you tighten the chain ring. A set of various bits, it's always good to have it. An 8mm wrench key if you are thinking to replace your hydraulic brakes. Also you should need an oil binding tool and uh, hydraulic uh, mineral oil. A duct tape and uh, a universal player just in case. And last but not least, the small ratchet uh, will make your life easier. Last question for today. How long does an e-bike cassette or uh, chain last? Well, according to most e-bike technicians, the general rule of thumb is that uh, the chain on an e-bike should be replaced every 3000 kilometers and the cassette every 6000 to 9000 kilometers. But you know it is impossible to pinpoint an exact distance after which the chain or the cassette is worn out. Too many variables influence the time of replacement. I want to stress two factors that affect the lifespan of uh, the chain and the cassette. Regular maintenance is the first uh, factor. Periodic attention to the maintenance of uh, the electric bike may save you many difficult times. All you have to do is make sure that it is periodically cleaned and lubricated at the same time. The second factor is buying a high quality kick components like cassette, chain, etc. Purchasing a high quality cassette is something that may save you a lot of time and fatigue as well as money. There are many materials from which the cassette is made, starting from steel and aluminium, so investing a little extra money to buy a high quality cassette may save you a lot of money in the future. If you have the budget available, I would advise you to upgrade your e-bike using Shimano Link Glide parts. The Link Glide parts are more solid, more robust and designed with minor technical modifications. Altogether, they are aimed at three things in particular. Increased resistance to the stress on the e-bike, clean shifting processes and reduced wear and maintenance. Also, part of your bike upgrade must be the hydraulic disc brakes. The 1000 watts motor is powerful, so it is advisable to have a 180 mm rear and 200 mm front disc rotors. Bear in mind that based on your initial brakes setup, you should buy some adapters to fit the new rotors into the calipers. That's it for today, folks. I hope at least help you choose the right mid drive motor for your bike. Stay tuned because in the next video, we will see step by step the installation of the motor. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to stay updated on my latest content. Take care. Cheers.